Unkerhentius clarki stomius. This is a greenback cutthroat trout. Let's make something cool today. This is a greenback cutthroat trout. And these guys pretty much reside on the western part of our continent, specifically the Arkansas watershed and the Platte watersheds in the Colorado regions. Into Montana a little bit, but there's a lot, there's like 14 subspecies of cutthroat trout. And they're scattered all about. There's in the Rio Grande and the higher plateau levels of Texas, all the way up to um, Arkansas and around here and into Colorado, Montana and the Rockies. So this one today we're going to do a juvenile trout pattern. I'm going to put it up on the screen right now and today we're going to be using a Johnston exclusive pattern Johnston blank. Now these blanks uh, are not available anywhere but Johnston. They are patented. He only produces two of them. One is a perch pattern like this and one is a toothache that's more of a slender pattern. So this has kind of got the hump of trout and salmon species, so I really like doing match the hatch stuff on this with trout. So that's what we're going to be using today. Uh, you can get these at johnstonlurecompany.com, and they're about the blanks themselves. No joke, they're about $20 a piece. So you're looking at a minimum, if you're going to be giving them to your clients, minimum of about $35 to $40. I would do $40 up for me. That's just me. Because um, there's a lot of work that goes into them and they are exclusive and unique. They're great for the pikes and the musky crowd. They're great for a lot of different species and bass will tear these up around here. So this particular one, this perch pattern runs two to four feet deep. Uh, it's got a little bit of a lip on it. it. Comes wrapped in plastic, but I'm gonna go ahead and put some tape on that as well. Um, let's get started. Now this is the first cutthroat pattern that I've done. I've done rainbows, I've done uh, brook trout, which I almost did another brook trout today, but I have one. As a matter of fact, the one that I have is on this Johnston, and I'm really happy with the way that came out. Let me see if I can find it real quick for you guys. I know it's over in the bag area. Let's go pull that out. So this is the brook pattern that I did on the same blank as this. Beautiful brookie. Love doing these patterns. But today, now the cutthroat, there's also cut bows. Again, there's a lot of different species of, uh, of this cutthroat trout. But we're going to focus on this greenback and uh, it's beautiful. Now cutthroats are notorious for having that orange slash underneath their gill plates on the bottom and a very nice orange on the base of them. The juveniles, which is what I have pictured here and above for you guys, not quite as prominent, but we are gonna kind of blend that into this pattern today. So I'm gonna do a slight modification of the pattern that you see with you, but it's gonna primarily be that exact pattern. I'm pulling out the colors that I'm probably going to work with today. The juvenile trout is not going to look at all like what the um, the adult version looks like, but it is going to incorporate some of the same tones. So you almost see a canary yellow coming up from the bottom uh, right around this lat line and then some either burnt sienna or burnt orange up in the top and that's going to be softened with a little pearl white. So I'm going to I've, I've, I'm going to put a little bit of a white base coat on here first. I know it came white, but in order for those colors to naturally blend, we're going to be using that wet on wet technique. So I'm going to load just a little bit of white into the chamber here. Some opaque. Just This is not mixed. This is just a regular standard opaque white. And I get a lot of questions about whether or not I mix it or do anything to keep it from clogging. I, I wish I could tell you that I had tons of problems with this stuff, but I really don't. Usually when I'm putting on my base coats, though, the one thing that I do, I keep a little marble in here, 
and I also put my base coats on around 45 to 50 PSI so I'm pushing it out pretty quick so that usually keeps the clogs from from staying in the chamber but as you can see I just put a chamber in and was able to load that on the on the bait pretty easily but I'm going to leave this white in the chamber. We're going to come back with some pearlized pineapple. It's a little bit dark of a color for this. I would prefer something a little bit lighter. But because I have the white in the chamber, that is going to help soften it. Now with this, I am going to pull the PSI back to right around 15. And we're going to go from the tail up to the cheek. Just real soft until I see that yellow starting to come out. Maybe dip down a little bit there, come over that pectoral fin. Just so I have a little dip right there. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Come down below just a little bit. We almost have an orange tone above that, but that's so transparent. I don't think I want to put that in just yet. I might do a light spray after I get the pearl on there, just so that you can see that. The trickiest part about doing match the hatch patterns is trying to figure out at what point you want to put on what colors. So the way I usually work that through in my head, always put the white on first, obviously, that's a base primer. And then I put my light colors on. And I'm probably going to come back and put my dark colors on this time. And then everything in between is going to go afterwards. Just because I want to kind of take the temperature of how the bait looks hypothetically. Virtually. I'm not going to take the temperature of the bait. But moving on. I think I want to stay with... You know what? I'm going to test paper this. I always think it's a good idea when I'm not exactly sure what tone to put on. Get out our white paper. I think the burnt umber might be way too dark and it might be too green of a tint as well. It's not too bad. It's got a little bit of green and it may be just lightly shade in the top and just the features around the eye but not a whole lot more very light pressure on this right around 15 is what I'm working at still I'm going to continue to work at 15 And it is, it's a little bit green for me, but I'm going to change that up with the next color I'm putting in the chamber, which is going to be that burnt sienna that you guys see in front of the pearlized white right there. Don't need to really add too much here. The one thing though is that this is, this is that real orange. Why am I having so many problems today, folks? No idea paper just doesn't want to behave. Real light. Come back. And do the same thing. about as light as I can spray it is what I'm doing here. A little bit darker towards the tail there. I'm also going to do a light layer just to kind of give it some shading 
over top of that raw umber that we put on. I'm going to put a little bit of pearlized white in the chamber here. Keeping that pressure real low. Now we're just going to come back and mute everything down. And the other thing that pearl white does when you're doing a blend is that it really blends those colors nicely for you. Do a little bit more. Only had like three drops in there. I'm just working. Single layer sprays over the whole bait, soften that up. And now you can see that's like two shades lighter, which is exactly what we want it to do. Still have a little bit of a profile with that raw umber, that's still in there. And that's pretty much all we're going to be doing. The actual orange in this lure, which is in the midsection right here, right at the lateral line, and then this pectoral fin is going to be almost the last thing that we do. Now there is just a little bit of that orange pink color because that's sort of the color that its uh, gill plates are going to get to. I've achieved that with the pearl and the brown here but I am going to mix down just a little bit of orange pink and white just to kind of achieve that pinkish hue that's going on in the chin and right in the bottom gill plate section for this. So these little medicine cups are fantastic. You can get them online. I've got them listed in the description below. And they're great for mixing up small portions of paint. If it's going to be just like a one-time use or you really only need it in the chamber a little bit. And just make sure that you're getting all that goo out of the top that's dried up. And that's, that's going to help miles and miles from keeping the clobs and the... Is clob a word? I'm not even... Globs and clobs? So, you know, keep that mess out of there. Lots of white. White is our primary in this. I wonder though, have I even used that yet? I have not. Because I have white, if I went one shade darker, just one drop. It's a red base, folks. You don't need a whole lot of red base in your color blends. And then maybe just a normal orange. That's a sunrise yellow. Where's my normal? That's a normal transparent orange. Two drops there. Usually I just use the base of that. I've got that one pink and some orange. This is gonna be way too orange, so I'm gonna seriously have to tone this down with some more white. Still like a light flesh or pink tone with that peach. Just a good blend. I'm going to continue to blend this down. The formula is as follows. 20 drops of pearlized white, 5 drops of an opaque white, 3 drops of fluorescent sunburst, which is right here and then one drop of flamingo pink. And the white really softens that up. This is just like a one-time use. I'll show you what it comes out like on here. It's almost a flesh tone, but a little bit more orange. There you go, that's your color. And that's gonna be our base for our gill plate behind our cheeks here and kind of accenting around the eyes just a little bit. I'm still lacking a little bit of depth and dark right behind this hump area or actually forward of the hump. I'm going to bring just a couple more drops of raw umber back into this just very lightly. Hit the same regions on this side. And 
and just keep working that until you have the shade that you like and then I'm going to finish that just pull that all out of the airbrush chamber and across the back of that at this point I'm going to clean the chamber a little bit and I am going to give this a heat set because the next step is going to require us to put those spots on and if we're going to lay any stencil into this we really want to make sure that we're good and dry. And this is also going to give us a more accurate picture of what it's going to look like as a finished lure because usually with most paint, house paint, acrylic paint, watercolor paint, you'll get one shade darker when this is dry as opposed to when the paint's wet and laying on the bait. And since we're detailing, this is going to be like the last time we're going to go over this and look to see if there's anything more we need to do. The only thing that I can think of is that I might want to lay in a little bit more pearl white because this is a little bit too yellow. That yellow really needs to soften a bit more. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come back in. I've got a clean chamber. And just load some pearl white in here. And work from the bottom up. Really don't want that yellow to be prominent the way it is at the moment. So we're just gonna keep we're gonna keep softening this. And that's starting to look like how we want it to look. Much better, much more muted. I'm really glad I came back and did that because that lightened that. See, and, that, and you won't know until you heat set before you put on your stencil parts. We are going to stencil this. I'm trying to figure out what, as I, I'm kind of thinking on the fly here, no pun intended for trout, um, trying to figure out if I want to use this picture as a gauge because technically, I could probably just print another image of this because they're roughly the same size. And uh, yeah, I think I've I think I've figured something. The light bulb just went off in my head. I'm gonna print a second image of this, and we're gonna cut the stencil directly out from this picture because when you put them back to back, yeah, they're about the same size. I like that very much. Okay, that's what we're gonna do for the stencils. Hang on for my next trick. Okay, so this is the second one. Just gonna make a rough cut on here. And on this rough cut, obviously we don't have the tail here, but when you put this nose to where the tail would start, it's almost identical in length. Obviously this one's a little bit thicker, so that means that we can stretch these out. But I, I think we've got ourselves a pretty good base for a good stencil. Now this is going to be a one-use stencil, so we are going to do the stenciling directly on here. I'm going to add just a little bit of width and height to the existing splotches on here only because the uh, the blank that we're working with is uh, it's thicker it's taller I'm only gonna do this for the big ones we're gonna hand paint the, the small black dots on here and that doesn't have to be exact, but it should be sort of close as far as where the dots cover. So like a rainbow trout, dots are all over it, but these almost look more like a brown trout would look. So I'm just gonna do this real quick, and then we'll get back to painting.
Okay, let's stencil it. For this next part, I generally do this on here, but because it's such a large piece of real estate, this is dry. I'm going to go ahead and set this right down on the bait. I'm going to flip this over. We're only going to get one use, so I have to kind of remember that I want to curl this around and then because this has a tendency it might get wet or seep through we're going to heat set the actual um, stencil as we go between sides. Remember that this is a thicker bait, it's a taller bait so we're going to need to kind of separate the top from the bottom unlike the trout that's very thin. So all I need to do is just kind of look for where that is and then bring this below the median line and then just kind of get that in and don't freak out if this is too dark because we're going to pearl white this again and then as we go we're going to kind of lift this up and modify just a little bit so we can kind of keep with the contour of the lure. And then two down here on the bottom and you can kind of look through this stencil and get an idea of where that line is so that you don't hit the line. You want to be underneath that line and that looks pretty decent. Uh, the one thing I might do is complete this side right there. Get that dark. And again, this is too dark. It's going to need to be kind of pushed into this lure. So we'll do that with pearl white after we're done laying in the stencil. The other thing in the pattern, if you'll notice, pull that up for a second. If you'll notice on the top part here, there's actually two of these, one above the other. So we'll do that as well. And again, don't freak out because this is dark. It's going to be dark, but we're going to add some pearl white into it, so don't fret. It'll calm it down. Since we have a stencil out that's conducive to doing what we want it to do anyways, and we still have black magenta loaded into the chamber, let's go ahead and add in some shading around the gill plate. just kind of continue that contour on down shade over this eye here just a little bit of shading contour line in there shoot from the back to get your contour lines in there and then shoot from the top down on your lip. And again, this is gonna look dark until we get our pearl white in here. I'm just going to freehand this. And then we've got a little bit on the top part of this gill plate here. A little bit more lighter there. And then the same thing here. Just flip it on the other side. The last thing we're going to do with this before I put more pearl white on here is just darken in this pectoral fin. You can freehand that as well because the, any, any kind of overspray is going to disappear when that pearl white goes on. So let's get that on and see what we've got. 
We've got our pearl white loaded in. Just even. You just want to come back and go even. Don't get too heavy on it because you don't want it to drip or move on you. And then we'll just lightly put some detail back in the back. And just lightly come and put on a little bit more to the top of this just to get that profile back. So I'm just putting the finishing touches on the hand detailing here. I'm going to do one more side. I'm not going to bore you with that because I'm sure all of you understand how dots go on. The biggest thing to remember when you're doing stuff like this is to try and follow the pattern. So, for example, in this one, let me slide this back, a lot more smaller dots towards the back of this trout than there are towards the face. So just be mindful of that and don't overcrowd with dots up in the first third of this bait. And that's pretty much it. The rest of it is all just laying in the dots. And then we're going to put some eyes on this. Dunk it in some clear coat and call it good. Oh. That cuts deep. I only have one eye left that I really wanted to put in this bait. Dang, um, I'm going to have to settle for two of the ice. These are 8.5 millimeters, which fit perfectly on this little guy. I'm so bummed. I don't even have any earth colors. So this trout's eye is absolutely yellow. It's not silver. And that sucks because I really like to be consistent with match the hatch on stuff like this. Ah! Drives you crazy. You get so close. I mean, look at that. That color? Hey. <laughs> That's what it's supposed to look like. But you know what? There's not one thing I can do about that. I'm going to have to go with silver eyes. Jenny is sad. <laughs>